What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build a chess robot. In the description below and on my Instructables page, I'm gonna provide you with the material list, all the mechanical drawings, the electrical diagrams, and the code on GitHub. Because of how large this project was, I'm not gonna be building the robot on the screen like I will for some of my future projects. Uh, but I am gonna go through all of the parts, exactly how they work and how they all fit together. The robot uses three linear actuators, X, Y, and Z, with a gripper at the end. The actuator channels are made out of PVC plastic and are held together with varying length, 1 8 inch diameter tap screws. The exact location of the tap screws are not very important as long as they do not interfere with the inside of the channel. Each actuator consists of a block and a lead screw. A lead screw is a threaded rod. When rotated, it moves the block along the shaft. The lead screw rotates using a stepper motor attached to a coupler. As the stepper motor shaft turns, the coupler turns, which is also secured to the lead screw. Stepper motors move in extremely precise increments, meaning I can calculate exactly how far each block moves based on how many steps the motor's made. The ball bearings located at the side of the tracks allow for smooth rotation while keeping the lead screw steady. The moving block for each track is constrained to the sides via the channel. The X channel also has two metal bars to prevent it from rotating even further. This is especially useful when the Y track goes all the way out and it creates a large moment. The gripper works by having a servo motor rotate a circular track. Four arms are constrained to the circular track, causing a back and forth motion when the arms are constrained to the base, like so. This allows the gripper to move in and out slightly, allowing it to grip the pieces. The exact placement of the wooden supports is not extremely important as long as it does not interfere with the gripper. As long as the beam is supported, anything can be fixed with code. The base of the electrical is an Arduino Uno. The chessboard detects if a chess piece is on any given square using magnets that are installed in the piece and reed switches that are installed under the board below at each square. A reed switch is an electrical switch that closes to allow electricity to pass through when it's in the presence of a magnetic field. Wires are connected from each pin to a reed switch, which is then connected to ground. An Arduino only has 13 usable pins, not nearly enough to handle all 64 squares of the chessboard. To solve this problem, an Arduino multiplexer shield, which is placed on top of the Arduino Uno, is used to add 48 additional serial pins. We still only have 61 pins with the multiplexer shield, so we still need to add more pins if we want to include all of the reed switches and the stepper motors. To obtain the remaining required number of pins with some to spare, we use two MCP23017 inter-integrated circuit chips. These chips add 16 additional pins each. The circuitry is fairly complicated, so more information for, about these chips can be found on the documentation online. With the addition of the two MCP chips, we now have 93 total pins in order to complete the project. Three limit switches, three motor drivers, and three push buttons are also controlled with these serial pins. A limit switch is a switch that closes when a small mechanical lever is pressed. I used the limit switch for the X, Y, and Z axis in order to home the robot to return the X, Y, and Z positions to zero in the code. This also returns the gripper arm to the corner of the robot. Each of the three ST6600 motor drivers require two pins to function. Finally, the three push pins in the front are used to send commands to the robot while it's running. The top button tells the robot that you have finished your turn. The middle button homes the robot, which is used in case the motor is stalled, which causes the code to think that the robot is in a place where it's not. The bottom button resets the change counter in the Arduino code, which I'll talk about later. A 24 volt power supply is used to power the stepper motor drivers. The power supply is only connected to the stepper motor drivers. It is not connected to the rest of the Arduino circuit, which would cause the Arduino to fail. The electronic circuitry may seem complex. However, the electronics are simply a series of individual components that are all connected to the Arduino via serial pins. Each electronic component can be tested individually, so it's really easy to determine where there's an error with your circuit. Arduino and Python are the two programming languages that are used on this project. The entirety of the code can be found on my GitHub page in the description. The chess engine is written in Python, while the Arduino code controls the physical robot. The chess engine consists of the chess class and the state class. The chess class utilizes a list of states, with the top of the list, or stack in other languages, being the current state. This structure allows for a simple implementation of an undo move function which is vital to the depth-first search-based algorithm, which I will describe in a bit. 
The chess class also utilizes a move generation function and a fairly complex fast check detection algorithm that uses dictionaries or hash tables in other languages to keep track of enemy attacks. The state class contains everything needed to determine the board state. It contains the board representation as an 8x8 list, whose turn it is, the current move that brought it to the state, the castling rights, the empassant rights, and more. The chess and state classes provide a solid object-oriented structure to the project. However, the most important classes are the algorithm and the minimax game tree classes, which allow the robot to play chess at a really high level. The core algorithm is a minimax tree with alpha beta pruning. The non-technical way of thinking about this algorithm is the chess bot looks several moves deep to try to find a strong move, and it ignores any path that will yield a weaker move than the current best move found. The triangles pointing upward represent a player that is trying to maximize the value. The triangles pointing downward represent a player that is trying to minimize the value. The computer begins by recursing to the bottom of the move tree. The state value at the bottom is a three. So the value of this empty turn is updated to three. This is changed quickly, however, because the next possible state for this turn is a 10. Since this turn is trying to maximize its value, the value is updated to 10, which is greater than three. The computer follows a depth first search path up and changes this empty turn to 10. Now the computer checks the next path which updates this value to six. Because this turn is trying to minimize the value, this turn is updated to a value of six. Once again, we update the empty turn and then we recurse deeper into the tree. We continue the algorithm and find that this max triangle here is three. Here is where the alpha beta pruning part comes in and it's going to cut off the rest of the tree. Since this turn is trying to minimize the value of the two below it, we know that the maximum value that this could possibly be is three. It doesn't matter what this number ends up being. This number will always be either three or less. Since we know that this turn is going to be less than or equal to three, we could cut off the rest of this tree because we know that it will never exceed six where this is trying to maximize. So we know this is going to be less than or equal to three, and we know that this is going to be, this path is going to be chosen because this is trying to maximize the value. The computer will then select this move in the software. Chess trees have over 20 possible moves per level, which exponentiates the number of calculations dramatically. A search tree that searches five moves deep would have roughly 3.2 million moves. The deeper the software can search, the better the software will be at playing chess. The Arduino code does two things. It reads human input data, which it then sends to Python, and it receives computer move data from Python, which it executes via the robotic arm. The detection algorithm works by continuously updating the array that stores the values for the 64 chess squares. The value will be one if a piece is not on the square, and zero if a piece is on the square. This one zero convention is used to allow for the use of an internal pull-up resistor within the Arduino and the pins, which sets the default value of the circuit to one. If this is not done, the readings for an open read switch will oscillate between one and zero. Once a human player presses the top button on the front of the chess bot, the updating loop stops and the move is sent to Python. Arduino then waits for a computer move, which it executes by moving the stepper motors to place the arm in the appropriate position. Each of the 64 squares is calibrated for the arm position. So if there's any mechanical error, you can easily fix it by calibrating the robot to be at a specific square with the numbers. To run the program, upload the Arduino program chessbot.ino. After that, run the Python program playerversai.py. With the robot parameter set to true, you'll be playing against the chess robot. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, all the resources required to construct the robot can be found on my Instructables page and in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more awesome robots.